Hi! Good day! Welcome back to our class. For today, we are going to discuss about the measurement of the derived quantities. When we say derived quantities, these are actually quantities which are obtained from the fundamental quantities. Some of these derived quantities are the area, the volume, the density, specific gravity, and the specific heat. Now, let's start with the area. When we talk about area, this can be associated with a flat surface with boundaries. And area, by the way, is already a two-dimensional measurement. And what are these two dimensions? They are the length and the width. We can find area in polygons. Now, what are these polygons? Polygons, by the way, are geometric figures bounded by many sides. Common polygons are the square, the rectangle, the triangle, and the circle. So let's start with the square. Now a square is a polygon with four equal sides and four right angles. And the formula in getting the area of a square is A equals S squared. Now, suppose we are asked to get the area of a square where its side measures 5 centimeters. So, we will just substitute these 5 centimeters to the formula A equals S squared. Therefore, the area is 25 square meters. We can also get the perimeter of the square. When we talk of a perimeter, this is the total length of the sides that bounds a polygon. So going back to a square, wherein there are four equal sides, so the formula in getting the perimeter of a square is perimeter of a square equals 4s because there are four equal sides. So going back to that problem that I gave you a while ago, the perimeter of that square is equal to 4 times 5. Therefore, the perimeter of that square is 20 centimeters. Another polygon is the rectangle. A rectangle is a geometric figure where its two opposite sides are equal and parallel. And it contains four right angles. The formula in solving for the area for a rectangle is area of a rectangle equals length times width. Or area of a rectangle equals base times height. Now, if you use the length and the width, the length is usually the longer side of the rectangle and the width is the shorter side of the rectangle. Now, suppose we are asked to get the area of a rectangle where its width is 10 centimeters and its height is 20 centimeters therefore the area equals length times width so you have 10 times 20 the area of that rectangle is 200 square centimeters now if you are asked further what is the perimeter of that rectangle 
The formula in finding the perimeter of a rectangle is 2 times length plus width. So that means the length plus the width, you multiply that by 2. So going back to that same problem where the length is 20 centimeters and the width is 10 centimeters, so there is a total of 30 centimeters. And if you are going to multiply 30 by 2, so the perimeter of that rectangle is 60 centimeters. Another polygon is the triangle. Now, this is a geometric figure with three sides. By the way, there are many types of triangle. You have the acute triangle, you have the right triangle, isosceles triangle, the equilateral and equiangular triangle, and we have also the scalene or the obtuse triangle. Now, whatever type the triangle is, it may be an acute, a right, isosceles, equilateral, equiangular, or the scalene. The formula in getting the area of a triangle is area of the triangle equals one half base times height. Now, where is the base of the triangle? The base is usually that side of the triangle which is parallel to the horizontal. And the height is that distance perpendicular to the base up to the upper vertex of the triangle. Now, what do we mean by perpendicular? To recall, a perpendicular lines are those lines which makes 90 degrees with each other. Suppose we are given that the base of the triangle is 10 inches and the height is 6 inches. You are asked, what is its area? So, using the formula, area of the triangle equals 1 half base times height. So, substituting 10 inches to the base and the height, which is 6 inches, Therefore, you have 1 half times 10 times 6 equals 30 square inches. The next polygon is a circle. Now, a circle is a closed curved line where all the points along the line are equidistant to a point called the center of the circle. There are parts to take note about a circle. Number one, we have the circumference. Now, this circumference is that closed curved line that bounds the circle. Another is the diameter. Now, this diameter is the longest line that joins two points along the curved line or along the circle that passes through the center. Another part is the radius. Now the radius is that line that joins the center of the circle to any point along the circle. Now in finding the area of a circle, you use the formula area of the circle equals pi r squared, where pi is a constant and its value is 3.1416, while r is the radius of the circle. Or you may use the formula area of the circle equals pi d squared over 4, where pi again has a value of 3.1416, 
and the D is the diameter. But I would like to suggest that when you are going to solve for the area of the circle, it would be better to use the formula area of the circle equals pi r squared because you will be only involved in a multiplication operation rather than if you use the diameter in getting the area of a circle you will be involved with multiplication and division operations. Suppose we are asked to get the area of a circle given that the radius is 6 centimeters. So using the formula area of a circle equals pi r squared so you have to square 6 giving us 36 times 3.1416 will give us the area of a circle equals 113 square centimeters. Now in getting the circumference of a circle the formula to be used is circumference equals pi d where d there stands for the diameter. Now since we're given in the problem that the radius is 6 centimeters what would be its diameter? We know that the diameter is 2 radii or a diameter equals twice its radius. So the diameter in this case is 12 centimeters. Substituting 12 into the formula circumference of a circle equals pi d. So multiply the value of pi with 12 and the circumference of the circle is 37.7 centimeters. Another derived quantity is the volume. Now volume is a three-dimensional measurement. The three dimensions are the length, the width, and the height or thickness. We can get the volume of the solids, the liquid, and the gas. For the solid, there are solids which are regularly shaped, and there are also solids which are irregularly shaped. The common units used to express the volume of these solids are, in the metric system, we have the cubic centimeters and the cubic meter. While in the English system, we have the cubic inch, the cubic feet, the cubic yard. The solid may exist in a regular shape or an irregularly shaped. What are these solids which exist in regular shape? These are what we call the polyhedrons. Now, a polyhedron is a three-dimensional geometric figure bounded by many surfaces. Examples of polyhedrons are the cube, the parallelly pipe, the cylinder, the prism. The volume of these regularly shaped objects can be determined using the formula. Now, let's go back to the cube. A cube is a derivative of a square. If you're going to look at a cube, all the surfaces are equal squares. Just imagine the dice. Okay. That is a cube. Now, because this is a derivative of a square, it is understood that all its sides are equal. Now, in getting the volume of a cube, the formula is volume of a cube equals S cube, meaning you are going to multiply three times the side of the cube. Suppose we are given a problem to determine the volume of a cube, 
where each side measures two inches. Now, substitute the value of two to S cubed. Therefore, the volume of that cube is eight cubic inches. If we're going to look at a cube and draw a line joining two opposite points of the cube. So, you have there the diagonal of the face of the cube. And this diagonal of the face of the cube can help you solve also the volume of a cube if it is only the data given. Aside from the side of the cube is given. So what do I mean by that? With this diagonal that will serve as the hypotenuse of the triangle where the sides of the cube are equal. Now, if you are going to bisect the face of the cube, therefore you can draw a triangle. Each corner of the face of the cube measures 90 degrees. So by bisecting 90 degrees, you will have 45, 45 triangle. Using ratio and proportion, therefore, with that diagonal or the hypotenuse now of a right triangle, you can solve the side of the cube. So, if you are given the diagonal of the face of the cube, you can also solve the volume of the cube by finding its side using the Pythagorean theorem. So if you try to recall the Pythagorean theorem, which states that the sum of the squares of the two other sides of a right triangle is equal to the square of its hypotenuse. So you use that formula in order to solve for the two sides of a square. However, you can also avail of the ratio and proportion using the 45-45 degree triangle, which states that in a 45-45 degree triangle, the sides measure 1, 1, and the hypotenuse is square root of 2. That is all for today. This is your teacher, Professor Nesitas Ruiz of Holy Name University.